call the meeting to order at 537. Attendance. Here. Okay. Public comment announcements. Pursuant to board policy number 2350, public comment may be limited to three minutes per person or 30 minutes per topic. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting at which the agenda item is called. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter not on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting for open forum on non-agenda items. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the boardroom from the recording secretary or online. We ask that all speakers come to the podium to address the board. Thank you. Okay, at this time we will adjourn to closed session.
we will reconvene to open session at 6.53. Attendance, we are, everyone is present, including our student board member, uh, Mr. Anthony Rivas, or Anthony Rivera, I'm sorry. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance, Ms. Harvey. Please stand and place your right hand over your Pledge of Allegiance, it's our flag. Yes, let's face the east. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Agenda approval. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Agenda passes. Okay, presentations. We have our 9.1, our first presentation on Native Bee Research. Ms. Patricia Palavicino. I hope I didn't mess that up. Too bad. Good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to start saying thank you to Dr. Salet for inviting me and my students to share with you the work we do. So, I okay. Yeah, it's just ready for me to start. Okay. So, our work for our institution and students. Um, first, I will start saying that uh, I have been a faculty member here at ABC, um, starting in 2006. I get a full-time position in 2019, and I became a tenured at the beginning of this year. While I was in my tenure track in 2022, um, I started working with a colleague from College of the Canyons and started an application for a National Science Foundation grant, and we, we got it for one year as an incubator grant. And we received money uh, to do research and offer opportunities for research, undergraduate research for our community college students. So we did a, we're very happy with the work we did. And after a year, a good results. Um, in this year, just a month ago, we received the news that we um, got or we were awarded a five-year NSF grant to continue and expand the work we did. So that is part of what I want to share with you. The name that you see in, in your screen, in 2022, uh, John Juarez, Justin T. Brookstone, and Jacob Bidwood were, were my students, the first group of students that started working with me with bees and studying those bees on campus. And this year, uh, this is being continued by this student. They are a wonderful group. So Diana, Stephanie, and Gustavo. So they, are they, they were working on bees on campus. Okay. This work, what is amazing about it is not only we are doing research and offering this opportunity to our students, but also we are getting together and forming a group. Uh, we, as you can see, that is a picture of the first group of faculty from nine community colleges in California, mentoring their students and working in research on bees. Okay, that was the first workshop that we have in 2022. Um, and they are, I cannot see the picture just next to that, but there you can see my students by that time presenting at COC in the workshop their findings. And also they took it and um, um, took it to the California Native Plant Society conference. And you have no idea 
how enriching that activity is for our students, giving them an opportunity to close a gap about what they are having as a community college students when they transfer for a four-year university. Um, then I can see, you can see their picture of my students, you know, working in the lab with the bees, uh, collecting bees in, uh, you know, parks and nearby with, and working here on campus on that. And also taking care of the gardens because bees feed on plants, the pollen of the plants, right? So we need them. So just August the 5th, we have another presentation in a workshop, all day workshop at College of the Canyons, because please remember, this is a teamwork. So I partnered with a biology professor at College of the Canyon and with a biology taxonomist that from ASIG Museum of Berkeley. So we are working together. And so this time, 10 community colleges were participating on this. Um, the presentation they were presenting and what you are seeing, that is the picture of the first slide, to be or not to be. So is that about native bees at ABC, okay? So um, these are our native bees. That is in Spanish, abejas nativas in ABC. So because sometimes when we think about bees, we think about honey bees, but what the other bees? We have a lot of species that are wild bees, native bees that collaborate in the process of pollination. So we discover here in, during our studies that we have on campus nine different genera of them. Well, you may think, well, yes, it's nice. Well, you're a biologist. We can expect the, the things you are doing. But I would like to stress that um, most of the bees, 45% of them, they are pollen specialists, meaning that they are feeding on particular species. So if we take that plant from the environment, of course the bees are gone. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we may not realize that how important is that until we learn that those bees are pollinating food for us. And, and believe me, the grocery store is going to look very different without bees. So they are doing something that is invisible for our eyes, but extremely important for humans. So uh, that's why they are important. Another thing is that part of my work in this NSF grant is community outreach. So uh, this, this semester, I went, during the summer, I was working in a video with my students in Spanish so to teach people about what bees are, why they are important, why are they are different from honeybees? Because we need to teach others. That is the wonderful thing about education, right? And finally, why what we do is important. First, because we provide our students with valuable opportunity to enrich their academic experience and background. So they are very well equipped when they transfer, right? Uh, we improve their connection with the institution because here I have a student that have been participating in the garden, planting plants. That create a very invisible but strong thing, link with the institution. We work to improve our biodiversity on campus because I want, we would like to have more native plants, bring more native bees, and we are helping our system, right? And in addition to that, we educate our community to expand a positive impact. So whatever we learn, if you just stay here, it's not good. It needs to be spread out. And that is another thing that we are doing. Thank you very much for listening to us. And we are ready for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to say uh, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for the work that you're doing in our horticulture area with the, the students. I know that, um, Diana, when you were ASO president last year, you did uh, got some plants together and you had some days out there working and, and doing some planting. Thank you all. That That's the kind of work that grows our community and leads to this kind of research. So thank you so much. Thank you. Our pleasure. That's the reason why we are here. Right? Thank you.
Okay, 9.2, student housing update. Dr. Sellick. Yes, I'd just like to preface the presentation that VP Brar will give in just a moment. Um, it's been a couple of years that we've been working on our student housing application. And as the board is well aware, we did receive the planning grant monies, um, but there's been a, a lot of changes in the works and we're looking at a second round of, uh, of application. And so we wanted to give an update on progress um, or what some might feel like is lack thereof as far as ABC is concerned. And also um, you will see that it's, it's a, an action item tonight to get a reaffirmation of our application for, uh, for the student housing grant program. So Shami, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Zellett. Good evening, Board of Trustees, student board member, President Zellett. Uh, student housing is a topic that's been discussed for some time now, and there's a documented need for housing for some of our most uh, vulnerable students. Uh, so we're gonna start with a student housing timeline. Shown here is how the district has responded to the need for student housing uh, since 2020. In December of 2020, the district received a feasibility study from a consultant, the Scion Group. The study supported the need for student housing and provided evidence that student housing may be feasible. Trailer Bill Senate Bill 169 and the fiscal year 21-22 state budget established the Affordable Student Housing Grant. This housing grant provided funding to community colleges, state universities, and the UC system to build affordable student housing. In October of 21, the district applied for a planning grant and a construction grant and was, was awarded $200,000 for the planning grant. It was not awarded the construction grant at that time. In January of this year, the district submitted a competitive application for $60 million for a 300-bed student housing development. ABC was not awarded the construction grant in that round either. But ABC was recently invited to apply for the third round of housing grant applications, and that application is due Friday, August 18th. Shown here is the information released from the Chancellor's Office showing applicants for round two. As you can see, the district had a competitive investment amount, but did not include a local investment. Again, round three of the grant application is open through Friday, August 18th. Next, we'll get into the visuals based on preliminary work done by Gensler as part of the housing grant application. Shown here is the visual. Um, called massing and uh, and it is located in the 30 acre adjacent lot that we purchased um, in, at the end of fiscal year 2021 at the beginning of fiscal year 2022. That is where it sits and um, parking is to the north and to the east of that building and there is a pathway running across campus to 30th Street West. Shown here is the building site plan, again, with parking shown to the north and to the east of the building. Here is a breakdown of the units. A single would be 110 square feet. There'd be 90 of them. Doubles are 175 square feet, and there are 105 of them allowing for 210 beds, total 300 beds. Again, some more visuals of student housing and the proposed layout here. And then next steps. Uh, the following steps, uh, submit round three of the application. This is what we uh, would like to do at this time. Again, the application is due August 18, 2023. Get additional information on potential changes to the student housing funding structure from the state. There are discussions in place for how the remaining funds will be allocated and what funding mechanism will be used. And finally, evaluate whether the proposed funding structure aligns with ABC's financial plan. Thank you, Shami. And as a follow-up, um, Shami pointed out that we were not awarded the housing grant in this cycle. 
um, there were two layers to it. There was um, an evaluation done through the chancellor's office and uh, all of the plans and applications were uh, evaluated through a rubric. We ranked nine out of the chancellor's office. And then, um, then it went to uh, the budget and finance committee and there, which is, and that's a state committee that's outside the structure of the state chancellor's office. In that committee, uh, there was a reevaluation done and a realignment of the order of awards. And almost, almost all of the awards were cooperative projects with UCs or CSUs. And, um, and that bumped us down. They awarded 13 projects. And had the original chancellor's office list been honored, then Antelope Valley College would have been one of the awardees. And so um, we are, we have put a lot of time and energy. More important than that, our students need affordable student housing. There are several projects um, that all of our beds are affordable student housing beds. 300 of them, all at the affordable student rate. There are other projects who have allotted a portion of the beds to market rate rentals. And so um, knowing who our student population is and what our students need and the amount of, uh, of needs that we're meeting already through basic needs, getting students into emergency housing and such. We were convinced that it was critical to, to um, commit all 300 beds to affordable beds. So while there are some discussions about potentially moving from a grant program to a different kind of structure, um, we were just speaking today uh, with uh, MGI advocacy, Mark McDonald, who will be coming speaking with the board in October um, about some of the political activity around this in Sacramento. September will really be the tell all date about how finally this, this will be funded even though there's a little bit of question around that at this point in time, we feel like it's in the best interest of our students. No, we don't feel, we know and believe that is in the best interest of our students to resubmit the housing application and be in the game so that if it is determined that it continues to be a granting program, then we can, we can proceed with the plans that the board has already sanctioned. So we wanted to bring it back to the board and, and share that information. Are there any questions? Dr. Zell, I just, uh, as you were speaking, I was thinking this might be the opportune moment for you to reach out uh, in a bipartisan way to Assemblyman Juan Carrillo, Assemblyman Lackey, and our state Senator Scott Wilk to let them know that we need their support. Uh, we have talked to uh, uh, Assemblyman Juan Carrillo, and uh, I believe he is aware that we are trying to get Okay, public comments. Pursuant to board policy number 2350, public comment may be limited to three minutes per person or 30 minutes per topic. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting at which the agenda item is called. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter not on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting for open forum on non-agenda items. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the boardroom from the recording secretary or online. We ask that all speakers come to the podium to address the board. Okay, our first public comment card, Mr. Dr. Jason Bowen. Welcome back. Uh, today is the first day of fall semester and I must say it was exciting uh, getting into my office, getting into the classroom, teaching all those students. Uh, it was wonderful. Um, Ladies and gentlemen of the board, student trustee, President Zillette, Patty McClure, General Counsel, Ms. Bridget Cook, thank you for taking my call Saturday, by the way. That was a courtesy. 
my purpose in sharing these particular public comments is to share with the board uh, some of the issues that we're grappling with on campus. And I'm not sure how often that is done specifically for my per uh, for that purpose, uh, but my hope is that with you know any information shared in good faith, uh, you, you may be motivated to ask questions of our president. Uh, I inquired recently, relatively recently, uh, as to the nature of a particular policy uh, that was in force on campus. And part of the response that I received from administration uh, was this, where I was corrected and I appreciated the correction. Uh, the first uh, excerpt is, the Federation uses the term policy in its inquiry, but the information sought pertains to practices employed by the institution as opposed to specific policies approved by the board, board policy, et cetera. Now, the particular practice that I inquired regarding is uh, described here. Uh, the current practice is that to the extent possible, faculty online courses will not exceed 50% of an employee's load in an instructional term. The practice is derived from Article 10 of the Collective Bargaining Agreement on Faculty Assignment and the guiding principle of Antelope Valley College is that full-time faculty be on campus to serve students. The district and administration has the right of assignment as set forth in Article 10, Section 3.8. So the justification for this policy, uh, one, it, it's a goal, and I applaud goals that make our college better. Uh, however, the, the, the legal justification, for lack of a better term, is the collective bargaining agreement granting right of assignment to the college. Now, I like to read section 13.8, article 10, because what's left off is a very important piece, uh, as you'll hear. So here's the, the, the statement in full. The administration will have right of assignment, which shall not supersede any other protection guaranteed under this agreement and shall be based upon student and community need. So yes, the district has right of assignment. However, the district does not have a right to use right of assignment to supersede other protections guaranteed in the contract. Now, the current practice is to limit full-time load to no more than 50% online load. Now, I'm simply going to read it. And for a moment, I'd like you to draw your own conclusions. Here is what Article 17 on distance education says which applies to all online modalities. Think we have here, you know, the prior statement. Workload will be determined in accordance with provisions of this contract. The proportion of a unit member's workload taught through distance education will be established through agreement between the unit member and the department dean and is subject to all provisions el elsewhere in the contract. So this current practice, limiting fully online load to 50%, to no more than 50% online, is in violation of the collective bargaining agreement. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Okay. Okay. All right. At this time, I would like to report out of closed session uh, on... Um, Action item, well, it was 4.3, um, pending litigation, PERB case number LA-CA5931-E, on a motion made by Michelle Harvey, seconded by Michael Adams, with a 5-0 vote, the board approved the settlement agreement between Antelope Valley College Federation of Classified Employees and Antelope Valley College Community College District. And uh, that was 5-0 with uh, an I from Barbara Gaines, Michelle Harvey, Michael Adams, Michael Reeves, and Steve Buffalo. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. Any discussion? Um, yes. <laughs> I would like to call uh, 
13.2, 13 13.6, 13 and 13.10. Um, we'll open 13.2 for discussion. Uh, yes, uh, I want to uh, take this opportunity to commend our board uh, director and secretary, Patty, the minutes that she took of the last meeting. Uh, they were very complete. And I uh, appreciate uh, all the work she does in taking the minutes. So I wanted to commend her. 13.6, uh, uh, we had $36,381. And our travel report, uh, I saw that one of the new vice presidents uh, had three uh, instances of travel. I wondered why that happened when the person just came on board. 13.10 uh, is the uh, application for student housing. Um, I represent District 3 of the Community College District, which includes where the college is located. Starts at uh, Quartz Hill Boundary and goes to 110th Street. So most of Lancaster is represented by me. That means the people around the college are represented by me. And I don't recall them being consulted about any um, idea to build student housing. I wasn't consulted. I had nothing to do with the drawings. Uh, I had nothing to do with the application. There was no discussion with me uh, about it. Um, so we're going to resubmit this with uh, only the administration submitting it. And it's for $60 million. Now, um, I understand that the college has some money. And if we use some of our money and some of the state money, maybe we would get some of the state money. Maybe we could build it. But nevertheless, it's my belief that the community that lives around here and the board members should be really involved in this before we submit this and grant again. Now, if we're so intent on student housing right across the street is apartment complex, uh, hey, we could use that for student housing, make deals with the owners of that property. And tonight we're gonna to be talking about uh, how we supplement students when they have different houses uh, in their places in the community. We're gonna talk about that. There are many ways to supplement student housing. Whatever way it is, the board has to be really involved. The people in District 3 that live around this college need to be involved. The students need to be involved in the design and everything to do with this deal. And I, until that's done, I'm not going to be in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. OK. Uh, any other discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Uh, I consent agenda passes four to one. Okay, action items 14.1 approval of the internal audit services plan for the 23 24 fiscal year. Do I have a motion? Second. Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 14.2, approval of updated salary schedules for administrators, confidential management, supervisory, CMS, classified, adjunct, and faculty, effective July 1st, 2023. Do I have a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approvement 14.3, approval of amendment number two to services agreement between HWW Incorporated doing business as Ad Club Advertising Services and the Antelope Valley Community College District through June 30th, 2024 for advertising of job announcements. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. 
four. Um, let's see, we have two comments on four two point four. Uh, first, I'd like to call up um, Ms. Pamela Ford. Good evening, board members, President Zellett, everybody. <laughs> um, I um, am concerned about the increase in the cost to $90,000 for this uh, consultant when we have an HRVP, an HR executive director, and an HR director with less staff in previous years reasonable accommodations were handled reasonably within the HR office with HR leadership. Outside leadership was utilized only in circumstances if there were exceptions. And so I don't understand why we're continuously bringing on more legal and we've got more management. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. I'd like to call up Dr. Bowen. Now, I'm not familiar with all of the work that uh, Shaw HR is engaged in. However, I'm familiar with some aspects of their work. You know, all of their aspect concerns assisting HR. My concern is we have a new vice president of human resources who we're paying. We just extended the contract of interim director of HR, and yet we're still reliant on outside consultants to do the work that, from what I've seen, we should be able to do. And so I'm not uh, in support of continuing to work with, with these consultants as such, except in cases where there are exceptions that warrant it. Thank you. 14.4, approval of amendment number two to consult services agreement between Shaw HR Consulting Incorporated and the Antelope Valley College to update the terms of the agreement through June 30th, 2026. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Um, yes, sir. I, I wonder if it's possible for the college president to explain uh, why Shaw's uh, being hired, uh, I think it might clarify if she's able to explain it. Is that possible? Sir, I will not discuss any ongoing cases or anything like that. Suffice it to say that, yes, we do have a new VP of HR. Um, HR has been short-staffed for a while, and so being on the, on the job for one month doesn't mean we've cleared our backlog of cases nor does it mean that there are cases without contention. And so as, uh, as the person ultimately responsible to the board for the district's resources, uh, I, I hope you trust me when I say we do not frivolously involve ourselves in contracts at, at outsourcing things that we could do on this, on this campus. Any other discussion? Um, Yes, Madam. But I want to just um, say that uh, there's a good reason why Shaw's being uh, hired in this instance, and um, that's all I can say. And um, I was going to make a comment like uh, Jason and Pamela, but I understand the situation now, and I'm going to vote for it. Thank you. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 14.4 passes. 14.5, approval of Child Care Alliance of Los Angeles, Quality Start Los Angeles Agreement, July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 14.6, approval of consultant services agreements for foster and kinship care education. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? I approve. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 14.7. Speaker on 14.7 is Penny Ford. Did I put that one? Okay. All right, 14.7. Approval of college housing program rental agreements for student housing payment program. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Madam President. I have some questions on this. Um, what we're in effect, we're supplementing uh, payments to students where they can stay in housing. And does this include the local hotels or apartments? Uh, can someone clarify that, please? We, we have several resources uh, through which we provide emergency housing for students. Uh, this is separate than the previous housing situation that we were discussing. This is not permanent housing. Um, so the, the situations that you reference, uh, hotels, et cetera, are all encompassed in these different uh, rental agreements. I approve. Aye. Uh, no. Fourteen point eight approval of service agreements for catering services. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Uh, yes, um, Madam President is President Gillette. Is this for the catering services that we used the other day? The opening ceremony. Um, I don't have the detailed item. I can get you that information. Um, no, but I just wanted to uh, say, if it does entail the, uh, the business that we hired to do the catering last uh, Friday, they were excellent. They did a superb job. And also, I want to commend our Vice President, Chami, for, uh, for doing that and also um, getting the, cap the cafe going again. You've done a great job. And also, you do a great job uh, monitoring Barnes and Noble, you know, it's really great to have a cafe on this campus again and have Barnes and Noble <laughs> has bookstores all over the country. You've done a great job. Really appreciate it. Okay. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 14.9, approval of data sharing usage agreement between California State University, Bakersfield, and Antelope Valley College. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Uh, yes, I, re I read the agreement that uh, President Gillette signed with the uh, Cal State Bakersfield uh, president. Uh, in that agreement, there is a big thing about liability liability insurance. And this sharing, the data is not only just uh, transferring students, it's other data for analysis. And when I saw that big insurance thing for a million bucks, I got alarmed about it. It wasn't just somebody trying to get into Cal State Bakersfield from uh, ABC. It, it, it just uh, made me uncomfortable. Uh, should we be sharing information like that or should we just be sending transcripts? Uh, can somebody explain that, please? In this day and age, sir, we're in multiple data sharing agreements, not only between uh, Cal State University Bakersfield, but also, also uh, with our local high schools. In order to, uh, for reporting purposes, in order to track our students' progress, which has to do with our funding formula, um, in order to uh, help students transfer transfer seamlessly. There's multiple reasons why we share data. The uh, liability policies, um, when it comes to data, everyone has to have them, whether you enter into data sharing agreements or not. Um, and so uh, that liability policy is not unique to this agreement. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 14.9 carries. 14.10, approval to administer the University of Texas at Austin surveys, sense, S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, add-on online and race 
ethnicity surveys during the fall 2023 and spring 2024 semesters. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Madam President. Uh, President Goulet, is this required by the Chancellor's Office that we do these surveys? These surveys are not required. However, they give us vital information about students' needs and, and student satisfaction and opportunities for the college to improve services for our student body. Thank you. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 14.11. Approval of end user user subject to qualification software license agreement for access and use of DRDP online software containing desired results developmental profile 2015 cloud version. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. 14.12, approval to purchase Microsoft licensing from computer land of Silicon Valley, utilizing FCCC Microsoft Campus Agreement. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 14.13, approval of year two installment payment for Adobe products and services using the FCCCC agreement with Adobe Incorporated, number 0091776 to Computer Land Silicon Valley. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? 14.14, .14, approval to extend the use of the foundation for California Community Colleges Master Agreement CB-208-17 with Bio-Key International Incorporated, formerly Pistol Star Inc. through January 3rd, 2024. Do I have a motion? So Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 14.15, approval to extend the use of the foundation for California Community College, Colleges Administrative Services Agreement, CB-244-18 with Nelnet Business Solutions Incorporated, doing business as Nelnet Campus Commerce for the district's integrated payment solution needs through May 20th, 2028. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Uh, yes. Why is this uh, going to 2028? Why is this such a long-term agreement? There is an implementation involved, sir, with this. So this is our payment processing. We use that for, for all of our, our payments, including for auxiliary. So installing it, implementing it, it, it made sense to have a longer term than a, than a one-year contract. Thank you. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Motion carries. 14.16, approval to continue utilization of California Multiple Awards Schedule, CMAS Agreement 3-22-05-10008, held by Apogee Telecom Incorporated, formerly Cumulus Technology Services, Inc., for the district's information technology goods and services needs. Do I have a motion? All those discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 14.17, approval to utilize the California Multiple Awards Schedule, CMAS with NE Systems Incorporated, for the purchase of information technology goods and services. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 14.18, approval to utilize the California multiple award schedules, CMAS with the Waxy, with Waxy Enterprises LLC for the purchase of janitorial supplies and equipment. Do I have a motion? 
Any discussion? Uh, yes, uh, Madam President. I thought we uh, agreed uh, previously to do business with Waxy. Uh, is this another agreement or is the extension of the other one we already approved? Mr. Reeds, I'm gonna have to look at that and get back to you. Okay. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. 14.19, approval of amendment number one to agreement number 21-W105 between South Bay Workforce Board Incorporated and the Anna Valley Community College District through August 31st, 2025. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 14.20, approval to award bid number ABC 2022-2023-14A, mobile welding, welding classroom with strong workforce funds. Do I have a motion? Any discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Board, if you will allow me to uh, chunk 14.21, 14.22, 14.23, and 14.24. These are all being paid out of her funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Yes. Is this uh, Mr. Vice President, is this the last of the HERB funds? I mean, this has been going on since COVID. Sir, the, we have a time limit by which the funds must be expended, and we will continue to put purchases through until the HERB dollars are spent. Thank you. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, 1421 through 24 passes. Uh, Board, I would like to do the same thing with 14.25, 14.26, 14.27, and 14.28. All of these action items are um, paid through Measure AV funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, yes, 14.28, exchange order for Cedar Hall. $409,016.08. We just started the project and we're already over budget. What? So um, the project, it, while the cosmetics of it may look like it's just started, the project has been underway for quite some time. I assure you, sir, that all of the change orders are fine tooth combed with our employees and the, the ones that uh, our vice president deems that are challenge worthy, they get challenged. And, and when there are delays and things like that, um, there are times when we need to accept the change orders. So these have been scrutinized. But uh, I thought we had a contract to build it. Why do they need additional $400,000? Change orders occur when there are changes. So if there are delays, if there are cost increases, if there are, uh, sometimes those things cascade down. And so a bid comes in and that gives you the big framework, but then change orders happen when changes occur. Okay, thank you. Advice? I approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 1425 through 28 passes. Okay, reports and announcements. We'll begin with Academic Senate. Mr. Hal Huntsman. Good evening, trustees, President Zellett, Ms. Cook, Ms. McClure, and uh, gathered stakeholders. Uh, it's my honor to serve as Academic Senate President for the next three years. Uh, I am, I come to you with a, a lot of experience, but I wanted to just give you a little sense of myself. Uh, I am the grandson of Swiss immigrants who came through Ellis Island and also Midwestern farmers. I grew up mostly in the Midwest in Minnesota, but I've lived in California since 2001. I actually moved to uh, California right before 9-11 and got my first job on the on September 12. My, I started on September 12 
my boss thought I was never going to show up, but I said, I, I got to work. It's even though the world has turned upside down. Um, most of that time, I've been working in California community colleges, uh, including a, a previous stint as academic senate president in my previous institution in San Francisco. So I am familiar with the role a little bit, and I've been here at Antelope Valley College for about four years. I teach math. And I am looking forward to uh, this role. I also am looking forward to this semester. It started today. It was very exciting. We had a lot of students. I can tell you that our faculty are already working hard, including that our counselors saw over 400 students today, which is practically unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, I know that we've also been uh, filling in for classes that we didn't even know we're going to fill. And I myself subbed for a class this morning for a, because we didn't have an, ad, enough staff to fill it. Fortunately, we found a, a person to take it over for the rest of the semester. But we just didn't want, to, we didn't want that class to disappear. So we're, a lot of us are filling in to make sure that we are uh, serving our students. In addition to those sort of uh, short-term concerns, I just wanted to mention that we are, of course, facing lots of challenges in higher education as a whole. Uh, for me, those include things like the influence of artificial intelligence, uh, the increasing demand for distance education, and of course, uh, enrollment, which we're all very concerned about. These, all these topics are going to be very much discussed by our Academic Senate and by our campus as a whole. And I know I'm looking forward to working with uh, President Zellett and the rest of the administration on those issues and many others. We are also looking to increase engagement and really to make our systems work better. Uh, I know that's something that's near and dear to President Zellett's heart. And uh, I also share the desire for us to not necessarily meet less, because I think meeting is good, but to meet more effectively and to meet more efficiently. And uh, we're uh, in the process of having those discussions. Related to that, I just want to mention one thing at, before I finish, which is just how important I think it is for us all to work together. And I look forward to getting to know you all. I, I will be happy to share my cell phone number with you. And if you, anytime you have a question, I'd be happy to uh, uh, talk with you, and I would extend an almost open invitation to visit the Academic Senate meetings. I, I say almost only because I would appreciate a little notice if you're going to want to visit. Uh, but other than that, if you say you want to come and speak to us, we'd be delighted to have you come. So with that, I'll say good evening, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Huntsman. Okay, Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers, Dr. Bowen. Thank you again. Good to see everyone. I have, uh, you know, been working with HR, the new HR leadership team for a month or so. And I've observed behavior that is extremely concerning to me. Now, the behavior that I've observed one could excuse it as due to inexperience. However, that particular team has extensive experience in education, so it cannot be excused in my opinion. And the behavior that I observe, have observed over last month is this, ruthlessness, brutality, the use of imitate, Im intimidation tactics, and the use of fear tactics. And this style of leadership that I have observed to the best of my knowledge, has been tolerated and supported by President Zillette. Now, that's fine. I'm not intimidated, and I don't have any fear. And I'm not going to let those that I represent be intimidated or sit in fear in their homes, wondering if they're going to pay their bills, wondering if they're going to make it through the next four months, reeling from statements written that are unbelievable in their manipulation tactics and in their nonsense. I believe that, you know, we're dealing with this because the goal of human resources right now is not actually human resources, where, in my opinion, 
The goal of human resources is to ensure that the employees have all the resources they need to do the best job serving our students. They shouldn't be involved in academic affairs issues or basing decisions based on issues in academic affairs. And if they had humanity as their goal, serving humanity, then we wouldn't see nonsense such as this. Now, this is, uh, I was granted permission to read this by the faculty member who received it. This is a justification for the harsh decisions that were made illegal, in my opinion, in this letter. So here's one of the justifications. Listen to this. You accepted overload courses before notifying the district that you would be unable to fulfill your contractual agreement for the face-to-face -face courses. Now, any full-time faculty member who teaches at Antelope Valley College would see there's a problem with that statement. I, I have to address the board. The problem with that statement is at this moment, this was sent August 11th. There is no faculty member who knows what their full-time courses are and what their overload courses are. They know that when the load sheets are handed out and those are handed out later in the semester. This faculty member who received this letter actually requested their load sheet ahead of time. And I looked at it earlier today. Of the eight courses that were originally assigned, all of them say base load. So how in the world could this faculty member even know what their overload courses were versus their regular load courses? Yet that is a justification for this harsh treatment. Now, I can't share the entire thing with you because there's some confidentiality issues. However, I will say Dr. Bowen, this is riddled with errors such as that. That's what we're dealing with. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Uh, Antelope Valley College Federation of Classified Employees, Ms. Pamela Ford. Um, I just want to say classified are busy serving students across the campus, both in student services and academic affair. And I believe that the entertaining, if I will say opening day event, show me out there dancing, um, gave us a shot in the arm to bring our students back to a vibrant, motivated campus. And if you could have seen student services today, it was it was busy as it should be. Um, Jason has pointed out that we still have work that we need to do. And I see his frustration because lately there have been actions that have occurred uh, due to lack of following processes, which, which has cost a classified employee her job as of tonight and led to a grievance that could have easily been resolved at the lowest level possible instead of denying the employee her due process rights. Building on my concern is we spent the last year building relationships with our, our new president by meeting and communicating regularly, doing whatever is needed to keep the positive momentum going. And that is very much appreciated. And I think we got a lot done as a result of that. Now that the honeymoon period is over, does that mean that we revert to the behaviors of the past administration? Or should we think back about how we got there so we don't make that mistake again? So the work that we need to do is in maintaining relationships and working past our differences. We need to employ the following, communicate honestly, openly, and regularly having meaningful conversations and follow processes and procedures. That's where we break down the most. No matter what it is across the campus, you get the most dissension when policies and procedures and regulations are violated or that are unilaterally changed. New cabinet members need to model the president's attributes, and there are many, but to name a few, what I, she knocked me off my feet when she first came here because there was a situation where a, an error was made on her part. And I almost fell out of my chair when she apologized for her error, not to me, but to classified as a whole. And that is just, I thought, well, maybe there's some hope here. Um, 
she didn't, she never um, hid from her mistakes. She didn't hide behind anyone to cover her mistakes. Instead, she owned them. And we, we worked through our issues and we moved forward. Working towards transparency and understanding, that's the next thing we need to do. But what does it mean? It means we need to be open about what we're doing and why. We need to be sure to ask for understanding what the, as to what the other person is saying. We need to make decisions based on fact and not entrenched and sticking together with one another, right or wrong, regardless if it's our team or not. I think Classified can tell you, when I think something's not right, they're the first to hear it from me. This, your time. okay. I just wanna end with saying that we need to avoid making mistakes that mirror what we did in the past. And we need to make a commitment to discussing our issues and um, trying to move forward without having misunderstandings so that we can, we don't wanna see what happened before. I think Barbara summed it up in the June meeting best. We want better than what we've had before. So let's keep moving on that positive trajectory and start meeting and communicating. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Confidential Management Supervisory Administrator, Ms. Michelle Hernandez. Well, good evening for the last time. Um, I am the outgoing CMSA um, chair and we are currently in the process of um, our voting. So we have a new cabinet that comes in for the 23-24 school year. Um, today, many managers, um, supervisors, um, classified, our entire campus kind of came together today. It was absolutely amazing to see so many people out on campus helping students find their way. Um, we had welcome tables that were set up, that we had executives, we had um, every walk of life, every every key stakeholder on campus um, helping students today. And so we'll do that again tomorrow. I do um, want to draw your attention to our welcome week activities that we have. It is on our website um, and just wanted to celebrate the coming together um, of our, our campus um, for this welcome week. Um, and just wanted to say my goodbyes. It's been an absolute honor, privilege, and um, oh, what an adventure and experience to serve Antelope Valley College um, and the community for 18 years and eight months. Um, Thursday is my last day, so um, I wish you well in all your future endeavors, and I'm sure whoever um, succeeds me will serve you well. Thank you. Thank you. Associated Student Organization, Mr. Benitez. Uh, hello, members of the board. I hope you guys had a good evening today. Um, also, um, this works, right? Oh, there we go. There it goes. Okay. So to talk about today, um, ASO and um, I want to start off with saying, had a great day for the opportunity to gauge students, grow awareness, and grow more in opportunities to educate and share. Today, I had the privilege to help on um, the first day of Welcome Week, or I should say, ASO and AVC faculty. And um, boy, it, it was uh, quite an interesting engagement, meeting different faces, different students, all walks of life and a few returning students uh, coming back for water and how many know ABC serves. So um, ASO had about seven to eight members attend uh, the first day of Welcome Week. And we currently have 17 members and pending uh, applications for our senators. Uh, we have like about two more positions to fill. So today was refreshing. I, I've talked to um, a dozen students about classes, building clubs, and give away water bottles and direct students to basic needs. And um, it gives me great gratitude to spend my time with my ASO members and plan for the future, the dream. Teamwork makes the dream work. From our summer to FYE to um, moving on to this, actually. Skip ahead. Uh, from our summer to FYE to second year experience, um, um, 
they hosted the Marauders uh, Matter Student Leadership Conference. And um, in my take, it, this was a wonderful experience. So the second and third days were very memorable. Um, we got to do a few uh, team building exercises where one of us had to plan a club and then uh, some of us had to plan a homecoming. And I could even say it brought me joy to like actually have a blueprint for homecoming like uh, this year. So I'm actually very ecstatic about that. Uh, one of our centers, uh, Zania Hernandez, actually helped out with like uh, coordinating and directing a few of our students uh, in this conference, which was uh, very awesome. Uh, I wish I had some of my peers here to reflect. I know Anthony Rivera was there in uh, day three. Was it Anthony? I think it was day three. Oh, day two. Okay, awesome. So, um, um, so it builds um, the awareness to ha of these board meetings to have them here. I know some of us first day of school, we probably stress and, and trying to get to classes. And uh, some of us are doing evening classes because some of us work in the morning and then um, it's just, uh, it, how many know your first time in college, first day of college? So my hope is students can see ABC airs. My favorite story today was actually offering a water to a student. And, um, and the student was just visiting and um, uh, like leadership, it's one thing listening, hearing each other's burdens and uh, communicating on the regular. And I think it's very essential because like, um, if you can't communicate your leader's vision, um, like uh, how many of us are, you know, following that person? There always has to be a dialogue. And uh, until this day, like uh, my mentors, uh, they listen to me. And, um, and there's ways that we can you know, build bridges from that, just being attentive and intentional with our time. So offering this water to the student, just listening to uh, struggles and doing that is part of being a leader and being a student servant. So um, it's a very memorable fact, like it, today was hot, yes, but like uh, some of these students were very grateful for ABC just being there in the moment to serve and listen attentively. So um, moving on to next, student registration. Uh, the hub was kicking and um, SSV, uh, I believe to uh, Ms. Reyes' point, we had about maybe 600 uh, students on campus and a few online. And um, it was uh, quite an event. I saw some of my ASO members serving as student workers, some of us on the, um, our cabinet are student workers. So um, priorities uh, kind of shift here and there, but there's so many of us that I'm actually excited to assign or actually work with my peers through this uh, fall semester and just work on um, tackling different events and trying to be, um, uh, presence and build ASO transparency in a sense. So we had a, a lot of, uh, you know, just uh, students to help and direct, some of them visiting the hub and some of them uh, just inquiries about clubs. So I'm very excited that we have about nine to 10 clubs, but two more pending, some of them uh, big ideas. I, I kid you not, one of the students coming in thought about a skate park at a school. I'm like, a skate park at a school? Wow, that's an interesting idea. Like, uh, you know, gotta look at the probably the red tape and the cost of that, but like, uh, and, and anything for community, right? Anything for community. But um, moving on, student success boot camp, I actually got to see some of the incoming students, and a few of our officers were working uh, some tables and then catering, giving food and just meeting new students, incoming students. So I got to chime in, take a few pictures, some of the pictures I took, uh, a bit about me, commercial photography background. So I got asked to take pictures. So um, these shots are like recent and uh, uh, I take a very, um, you know, like serious and also a passion for, you know, the work photography, ABC has offered me uh, ability to grow in that field. But soon as the sex boot camp, um, it was uh, a privilege just to meet these new students and just get to learn their story. And um, I believe like as a leader, uh, I would um, encourage other leaders to learn um, new students' stories and their names and just to uh, keep that dialogue and like, uh, hey, I see you around and like, uh, hey, like uh, how's the class going? It just builds a great dialogue. Um, but um, in closing, um, ASO is here just to keep building leaders. And uh, this year we have a big space in the hub and I hopefully uh, we get to organize and um, do what we can for our school because I really, really thankful for ABC. 
and um, I just want to see you know students succeed and uh, move on. Even though it's in a community college, like uh, in it passes by pretty fast. Um, I just want students to get something out of it, grow an opportunity, grow awareness, and um, share stories among their peers. So with that, in closing, it's my word. Thank you, Mr. Benitez. Inlo Valley College Foundation, Ms. Diane Knipple. Here. Okay, Office of the Superintendent President. Thank you, President Gaines. Um, before I begin my comments, um, Michelle, I would like to thank you for your service here at Antelope Valley College, and you will definitely be missed. And so as you pick, probably have gathered, she has taken a promotion at another institution, which is all great for her. She's got some wonderful things on her horizon, but you will definitely be missed. And whoever comes in behind you will definitely build on the wonderful foundation that you've laid. So Michelle, thank you and all best wishes as you go on your next step. So thank you for all of your service. So good evening, President Gaines, trustees, and the student trustee. Welcome to the first day of fall 2023. Friday was a wonderful day reconvening our entire campus community together, welcoming back those who have been off contract during summer months. We emphasize AVC serves, which stands for Students, Equity, Resources, Vision, Education, and Success as a framework to advance our work for the year, which is to one, remove barriers, and two, this is our big, hairy, audacious goal, eradicate disproportionate impact gaps. AVC employees are already on it. In the Student Services Building this morning, I witnessed classified professionals hard at work serving students and removing barriers from the first day of classes. I witnessed faculty welcoming students in to update ed plans and also uh, welcoming them into classes. I witnessed employees from all offices and job descriptions out helping. One of the happy occurrences on campus today was seeing the cafeteria bustling and busy. Our students and employees are grateful for the delicious healthy food at an affordable price. Thank you to Cassandra Price and Marisol Bennett and their team for all of the thoughtful creativity and planning. This is what this institution is about, service. Earlier last week, we concluded a productive summer of teaching and learning with an increase in both headcount and FTES. In 2021, we had 4,905 students and earned 856 FTES. In 2022, we had 5,034 students and earned 955 FTES. And this summer in 2023, we had 5,640 students attending and we earned 1,101 FTES. That's a 23% increase in FTES in the past two years. Many thanks to all the faculty and classified professionals who work to grow the summer programming and make education accessible in the Antelope Valley all year long. This fall, we see a similar trajectory with both attendance and FTES on a steady rise. In 2021, we had 11,418 students earning 3,516 FTES. In 2022, we had 12,106 students and earned 3,866 FTES. And this fall, uh, as of today, we had 12,731 students attending, earning 4,158 FTES. That's a 16% increase in FTES in two years. We're heading in the right direction and we will continue to strategize and think creatively about how to expedite our students' progress toward their goals. We enter our second year together with many issues off our collective plate and we enter with a full team ready to work together. And Pamela, just so you know, the honeymoon's only over when everybody gives up. So the honeymoon's not over. <laughs> Everybody's not giving up. I invite all of the campus and all constituent groups to commit to working together for the good of the institution and the community, to refrain from overly quick judgments that prohibit progress, and to realize that this period of readjustment is an adjustment to how institutions with a full team function. We will get there and we will go far as long as we go together. As we discussed on Friday, each interaction, plan, and decision matters, for this is not a dress rehearsal. Life is for the living, viva la vida, and we at Antelope Valley College are going to do it to the full. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sala. All right, we have board member comments beginning with our student member, Mr. Rivera. 
Um, as Michael Jordan said on his return to the NBA, we're back. Um, I'd just like to start off with last Friday, all of you were that were there, uh, you know, it was a welcome, uh, it was a welcome, you know, we were very welcomed by the exciting choral of dancers and uh, rejuvenated in by the panel student, great catering as Mr. Reese pointed out. And I was very excited to come back today. It's great to see the campus bustling with student life. Um, I think it's one of the first times in the past years that I've been a student here that I've seen so many students actually in the classroom. I don't, there were some students that didn't even have a seat in my classroom. And although it might be negative, it's a really big positive because it shows there's a big interest in AVC as a school. Um, during lunchtime, I went to the cafeteria and a, a group of students very excitedly told me the burgers are only $2. And I mean, there's just a line out the door to get those burgers. And I'd like to commend uh, Mr. Shawnee, is it? Yeah, for, for his work on that. Very excited to have a cafeteria here once again. And um, I mean, it's been a long day for a lot of us here, but it's an exciting year. I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to work with all of you. And thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Um, Mr. Buffalo. Michelle, you will be missed. I will miss seeing you on campus when I'm out walking around and your, your happy tidings and your upbeat feelings. And I, I will truly miss those and you will be missed on this campus. So thank you for your service here. Uh, you can always change your mind. By the way. <laughs> That's all. Thank you, Mr. Buffalo. Mr. Reeves? Uh, Michelle, you know I'm going to miss you. Every time I came on this campus for an event, Michelle was there. I don't know why, but she was always there and supporting the students and supporting the faculty and making this a great place. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're always welcome. Come back and stay with us. Uh, I want to wish everybody a great new year and uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Mr. Adams. I will also miss you, Michelle. Um, whenever there was a crowd of students on campus, you were somewhere in that mob. So, you know, it, it'll be strange to see a mob of students and not seeing you somewhere in that mix. So we appreciate all you've done for us and, and uh, good luck in your next venture. Uh, Mr. Huntsman, we're looking forward to working with you over the next three years. You follow in the footsteps of many great academic Senate presidents who have shown a lot of professionalism, dedication, perseverance, and uh, a willingness to work with the board. And we've always appreciated that. So looking forward to working with you over the next three years. Oh, yeah. Ms. Harvey. Uh, yes. I would also like to welcome Mr. Huntsman to the learning institution, um, make him aware that as for the board, he is a dedicated member of the So we look forward to seeing what will happen there. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, she already knows that I'm a fan. Um, I think I can go back and tell a little story now. Um, I was working on a college project through my job and they said, well, you know, we need these programs that students really do. And I said, I know who you should call. You should call Michelle Hernandez over at EBC. And they did. And she said, now, why did she tell you guys that? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so awesome. But from the very first time that I sat on the dais, I saw your passion for the students, what happens for them and for their outcomes. And every kid needs that. So thank you for what you've done. And I wish you the best in your future, really do. Um, I just wanted to also quickly mention that as long as I'm elected to sit on this board, the growth of the college matters. Students from a food truck to a cafeteria, having a meal matters. Being able to go to a two-year institution, I did that for Scythe Technical College before I went off to a big university. But there are kids out here today, young people, adults who are unhoused. They want to have an opportunity to have a roof over their head. 
while they receive an education. Either our role as board members is to uplift and support this community or not. But as long as Michelle Harvey is here, my plan is to support students, adults who come to change careers, to make sure that Antelope Valley College is what is a measure of growth of communities. Educational institutions, roads and highways, the cost of living, housing, those things are important and it's impossible to become a better community without educating those who come along. So I'm here for them. And as long as people want that, uh, I'll be here to see. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Um, I want to say to um, Michelle that I don't, well, I probably am going to say this, and everybody is going to know and agree with me 100%. But I think what a lot of people don't know is when we talk about building awareness to what exists on this campus for our younger students out in the community, that doesn't happen without having her name in that sentence. And I know it firsthand going back. Okay, now she's gonna date me. I'm gonna go back maybe 15 years. I first started bringing smaller, younger, people to this campus and every time she facilitated and yes we can and yes we can never really heard I uh, know we can't do that for you come out of her mouth and from an educator I just want to say thank you I wish I knew where you were going you didn't run that through us but apparently it's not necessary we're going to miss you truly here so I, I, I do wish you the very best uh, they're very fortunate. Wherever it is, they're very fortunate to have you. And I want to say to Mr. Huntsman, welcome aboard as the new Academic Senate President. Big undertaking, but I'm sure you're the gentleman for the job. So uh, lots of sometimes change is good and lots of exciting things come that way. Um, I, I too am very excited about uh, today being the first day of uh, opening of the fall semester and the increased number of full-time students here. It's very exciting. I uh, have said it a few times. Dr. Zellett's probably going to hit me. So hopefully she to scoot over a little bit. I still think we can open more classes for our kids. I really do believe there's a lot of closed classes out there and they're still trying to get in and maneuver and switch right down to the wire as evident by the number of people in the student services building today, 400, it's a huge number. So anytime we're, we're able to increase the number of class offerings, it's really, let's really you know, look into that and uh, make sure that we uh, are doing everything we possibly can to meet the needs of our community and the students who live here. And uh, just want to say thank you, Dr. Sellett. You've survived one year and we're better, we're better off for it. And I look forward to your second year and what you've got up your sleeve for the second year. How's that? And that's it for me. Thank you. We do not need to go back into closed session, which is a great thing. So we will adjourn at 816. Thank you.